1961 was a year of international tensions, compounded by crisis after crisis. It was a year of riots in Cairo to protest Lumumba's death. It was Cuba and a red regime and Castro's boast that he had always been a communist. It was Shombe and warfare in the Congo for that young nation torn asunder by civil strife. 1961 was Laos, now under the uneasy rule of a neutralist regime. And it was South Vietnam battling red guerrilla. It was the year that the Algerian war continued to pit brother against brother. This was 1961. In January, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was sworn in as the 35th President of the United States and began the momentous task of guiding the nation through the critical years ahead. It was a solemn ceremony as he took the oath of office and assumed the burden laid down by Mr. Eisenhower. President Kennedy made his first venture into personal diplomacy with a trip to Europe, conferring first with General de Gaulle, who remained unconvinced that he can or should negotiate with Russia over Berlin. Vienna was a neutral arena for a sparring match between two worlds. The men who hold the power to write tomorrow's history met, smiled, and resolved no problems. The dictator and the president, the East and the West, Constant ally in adversity, Britain received a report on his meetings from Mr. Kennedy. The bond between the two nations grew stronger. For a time, the very effectiveness of the United Nations was threatened when Dag Hammarskjöld was killed while on a peace mission to the Congo. The great apostle of peace had assumed his post in 1953 and brought to his work a dedication that won him international respect even from the Russians. They tried to remove him, but they could never question his integrity. Lieutenant of Burma succeeded Mr. Hamashold to guide the UN during the parlous times it faces. Man had his first great success in space when the Russians pushed a man across the threshold. He was Yuri Gagarin, the astronaut the Russians lionized as the first to orbit the Earth. It was the propaganda coup of the year. After the Russian flight, U.S. plans were accelerated. Commander Alan B. Shepard was sent into suborbital flight. Unlike the Russian venture, this took place in the white-hot glare of worldwide publicity. The Mercury capsule is right on course as the commander took over the controls to become the first man to guide a space craft. 115 miles up, he went 300 miles downrange, right on target, and was picked up by waiting helicopters. Triumph of Alan B. Shepard, U.S. space pioneer. Following in Commander Shepard's star-studded footsteps came Captain Virgil Grissom. Everything is A-OK -okay until the heartbreaking finale. As the captain prepared to leave the capsule, explosive bolts on the escape hatch let go, and the Mercury is lost. However, the moon gets closer. The line of demarcation in the Cold War lies in Berlin. West Berlin, with its burgeoning prosperity, is a thorn in the side of the Reds. Refugees from the East escaped by the tens of thousands until the communists, in desperation, threw up their wall of hate to seal off the border. In a decade, more than four million East Germans fled their homes, causing a drain on communist Germany's economy that was called no longer tolerable. Their answer, the wall. Now entire families are separated, their only communication a wave from a distance. This is heartbreak. This is the poignant drama not found in the reports of diplomats. A bride in the East can only wave to her mother in the West. She takes her vows in public loneliness. The border is strengthened, but still they escape. She hangs from a second story window. The red police try to pull her back. The Westerners try to free their grip. East Germans grasp any fleeting chance. A guard's back is turned, the barbed wire is slashed, and Westerners stretch forth willing hands to pull them to asylum. They gamble that a sudden rifle shot won't end their dreams, that a slip won't bring disaster. Freedom is man's most prized possession, and it is only for those who love it.
Immediately following the death of Doug Hammarskjöld, the United Nations Assembly heard an historic address that established the policy of the Western world. Mr. Kennedy presented a manifesto for peace in momentous and moving words, most of them directed at the Russian delegation. Ladies and gentlemen of this assembly, the decision is ours. Never have the nations of the world had so much to lose or so much to gain. Together we shall save our planet, or together we shall perish in its flames. Save it we can, and save it we must, and then shall we earn the eternal thanks of mankind and as peacemakers, the eternal blessing of God. It was a year that shaped the future of man.